G'day guys, welcome back to Mana Down Under. First video, it's actually Commander Deck Tech for once, not a deck idea. And it's all built around the common creature and not the commander. Persistent Petitioners. Watch me get this wrong a few times. So, this deck will clap some cheeks. It's going to be great. It's a 2 mana, 1 3, Human Advisor in blue. It's a common from the new set Ravnica Allegiance. With pay 1 tap, target play mills 1. Or tap 4 and tap advisors, target play mills 12. And the deck may have any number of them. That's it. We've built a whole deck around the, cr the common creature base. So, we're going to bring the boys in. There's going to be a ton of them. It's going to be good fun. Kind of like a turbo mill control plan. The actual commander, we've gone with Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. Um, he supports the deck's game plan in a lot of ways. He brings an extra color for us to work with, white, which does have a few advisors in it. He makes our blue and white spells cost less. Great, our main creature that we rely on in the deck is now only one mana. It's a one mana, one three with upside. He is an advisor. We can tap him too for our own mechanic we need to care about. And a spell for our opponent costs one more. He just helps the deck in every way he can. So, a couple of combos are really big here in the deck notice first. In True Arm and Paradox Engine you kind of do the same thing. Whenever a creature enters battlefield or you cast a spell, you pretty much get to reset your advisors and tap them all down again to mill. With this, a good setup, you can mill 24, 36 cards in a turn and it can really be quite terrifying. And in addition, all these little dudes are quite good blockers, they're, they're fat 1-3s. Keening Stone, you double up a graveyard. Again, if you just mill 24, 36, the graveyard's now 40 cards, let's say. Pay 5, activate Keening Stone, mill another 40, you're, you're pretty much dead now. Thrumming Stone, one of my favourite cards in Magic, hardly get to play with it, I need a lot of copies of them, but they're getting expensive, 30 bucks a piece. So your spells have Ripple 4, so whenever you play a spell, you may reveal the top 4 cards of your library, you may play any revealed cards with the same name as a spell without paying the mana cost, put the rest on the bottom of your library. Living the Dream, you play one Petitioner, you get maybe another 2, just even 1 extra Petitioners out of it, it really helps your deck game plan speed up because that's all your deck is the same creature over and over other creatures in the deck we've tried to keep a bit of a advisor theme going on council of absolute here for two reasons you can either name a card your opponent can't play it or you can name a card that you need to play and make it two mana cheaper up to you it's a bit of versatility michiko konda if anyone hurts you she makes them sacrifice permanence not a bad trade-off but remember blocking is not too bad in this deck and the humorless here don't have pronounced first name has flash and tap creatures you control may block. That's a big key part of the deck. Our creatures are tapping down for this main mechanic win condition. If we have her, they can block at the same time. Really good option there. And she's an advisor as well. Everything here is an advisor. Council of Advisors, I must advise you on this. Now these guys aren't advisors, but they're too good for the deck to ignore. The Laboratory Maniac. Our creatures can mill target player, not opponent. If some weird reason occurs, you're versing another mill deck or you're close to an empty deck already, mill yourself out and use a laboratory maniac to try and win the game. It is an option and it is there. Um, Headrun Crab, his passive mill is too good to ignore. Sun Titan, resurrecting CMT 3 or less is a good majority of the deck. Our main key creature type is only, well, two mana, but technically one in this deck. Now support. Um, we've tried to keep things that have obviously the mill plan and can trips and hand resetting. Jace Memory Adept, plus one, draw, mill one, zero, mill ten. I think everyone just does zero, right? That's all it is. Sphinx's Tutelage, great card, three mana. If you draw a card, they mill two. If they share a card or repeat, it's common for them to mill six cards from you drawing once. Patient Rebuilding, they mill three. If there's a land, you draw a card. It's just a good option. It's mill, it gives you fuel, lets you keep going. Other things like Alt of the Brood, really good early on. Every time you just have a permanent, they mill one. Passively across the length of a game, it can... Do 15, 20, pretty common, like not trying hard by any means. Traumatize, well, it's an other deck, it's a must have really. Um, Thought Scour, it's your kind of cantrip you want in the deck. You can make someone mill two, you draw a card. <laughs> visions from beyond might as well be ancestral visions in this deck, really. If a player has 20 cards in a graveyard, you draw three instead. Bit busted. Um, Ponder Preordain again, these really good, efficient cantrips are a key thing in the deck just to keep us going a little bit. Ristic Study, one of my favorite cards. Everyone should have it in the decks, I think, that can run it. Sphinx is Rev, it's your white blitz and must have its life and draw a bit of stabilization. And in terms of control, removal, that kind of thing, Supreme Verdict, so Clunk Rift are the kind of border wiping effects they've gone with. Um, the deck is pretty cheap, so I don't feel we need too many because we're trying to 
mill them out pretty early on. And we can block really well, so we can sponge up creature damage, so we don't have to remove them too much. Tension Sphere, Swords Plash, Empath XL, RR, Targeted Removal, and then a couple of counters with like Disallow, Mana Leak, Renaissance, and a Disenchant to hate on anything we can't really deal with. In terms of mana, the main creature of the deck is only two mana, and sometimes the game costs one mana. So, including mana rocked and lands, it's only 40. I've kept it on the lower side. Soul Ring, Signet, typical of a deck. Um, the lockets, I really do like them now. The fact that they're only three mana, they tap the two colors, but later on, sack them, draw two cards. Just keeps you going a little bit further. Um, Chromatic Lantern, I just leave it on my decks now. I just hate getting mana screwed. I leave it in there, it fixes me every time. As for the lands, we've got 17 islands, 13 planes, and we've got six non-basics here. Just split lands um, and wreck tower just in case you draw a ton of cards. Typical command land base. So, what do you think of the Petitioners? I think it's a great deck. I think it's funny. There's a lot of jokes you can make while playing this deck. Like, I must advise you. Have you heard about Lord and Savior? Would you be interested in some girl guide cookies or... I've, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can go with the deck. Have a bit of fun with it. Um, I love these kind of cards, Wizards. I hope you print more of them in the future. Where you have cards that can have any number in a deck. I just love the fun, the flavor, the tribe theme going on. It's really good fun. Um, so I've got a couple of cards I would like to put on the deck, but obviously I'm maxed out at 99 plus one now. So I'll mention anything in the comments that I want to put on the deck. Helm of the Host, I think would be funny with Grand Arbiter here. But if you have any suggestions for the deck, um, let me know guys. All right, have a good one, catch us. Thanks for watching guys. Please remember to like and sub and click the bell icon for notifications. It's greatly appreciated. And if you have any deck or video ideas, just suggest them down below and have a good one guys.